He's responsible for the most iconic play in college basketball history, but whatever happened to Christian Leitner? Christian grew up outside of Buffalo, New York to a working middle class family. Leitner's family recognized his basketball abilities early on and wanted him to be at a program where he would best capitalize on his skills. So they would enroll him in the private Nichols School, where he received significant financial aid. Additionally, Christian did janitorial work to further offset some of the financial burden on his family. And during his time in high school, Christian would break the all-time scoring record while leading them to a pair of state championships. He would soon be considered one of the best prospects in the 1988 class. And following high school, Leitner would commit to play for Coach K and the Blue Devils. Now, at the time, Duke was actually in the process of rising to prominence in the college basketball circuit. And Leitner would be one of the most highly sought after recruits they'd ever landed. Christian would play sparingly in his freshman season, but still averaged nine points per game. Entering his sophomore year, Duke would begin to rely on Leitner as one of their stars. Christian would go on to lead Duke to the 1990 National Championship on the back of 16 points and nearly 10 rebounds per game. During the tournament that season, Leitner would etch his name into Duke's history books. In the regional final, Duke would find themselves down one against UConn with just two seconds left in overtime. Leitner would hit a fadeaway jumper in the final seconds, giving the Blue Devils the victory. What we didn't know at this time is that that shot would foreshadow an even more significant moment just two years later. While the Blue Devils would fall just short in 1990, Leitner would once again lead them to the finals in his junior year. That season, Leitner would be recognized as an All-American for the first time. He would also average over 20 points per game in the tournaments, capped off by an 18-point performance in the national championship against Kansas, leading Duke to their first ever national title. For his efforts, Leitner would be named the tournament's most outstanding player. Returning for a senior year, expectations bestowed upon Leitner were understandably very high. Many expected him to be a Naismith contender and arguably the best player in the country. But additionally, Leitner would become one of the most hated players in the entire NCAA. At the time, Duke was first developing the reputation as the pretty boys. And in many ways, Christian was the face of this. This was coupled with his fierce competitiveness and willingness to do just about anything to win. This earned him a reputation as a dirty player. In his senior year, Leitner would manage to score 21 points per game, while once again keeping Duke at the top of the rankings. Now, 1992 March Madness would give us arguably the best college basketball game ever. In the regional final between Duke and Kentucky, Leitner would further cement himself as a villain after stepping on the chest of Kentucky player Aminu Timberlake. But the most memorable moment of the game came once again within two seconds left. Also in overtime, by the way, with the Blue Devils staring at a one-point deficit. Leitner, who was positioned at the top of the key, would collect a nearly full-court inbounds pass before turning around and hitting yet again another turnaround jumper as time expired. Duke would go on to win the national championship and Leitner would be named the most outstanding player in the NCAA. This would earn him a highly controversial spot on the 1992 Dream Team over numerous NBA stars, including future first overall pick Shaq. Additionally, Leitner would be drafted third overall by the Timberwolves in the 1992 NBA Draft, and he managed to carve out a solid career in the NBA, even being named an All-Star in 1997. But for the most part, Christian's 14-year NBA career was unspectacular, especially given his collegiate dominance. In the years since his retirement in 2005, Leitner has offered operated several youth camps, had a coaching stint in the G League, and even made an unsuccessful attempt to buy the Memphis Grizzlies. Today, Leitner's name is bound to come up numerous times once the calendar hits March. And while he still may be considered the most hated player in all of college basketball, he's also regarded as one of the most culturally significant college athletes of all time, and one of the primary factors in helping Duke turn into a basketball powerhouse.